Now, the second type of curriculum approach is student centered. In this type of curriculum, the teacher needs to take into account the individual needs of learner and work towards the all round growth of learner. The teacher can look at components of the curriculum wherein the student can be given freedom to select and organize content of interest, process to be adopted for learning. The teacher has to ensure that the ambience is supportive and students get varied exposure to learning situations. After this, the third approach is problem centered. In this approach, students collaborate with each other, with faculty and sometimes experts in the field to find solutions to real life problems. This approach is application oriented and makes the curriculum relevant to the day to day life of students and has tremendous potential for contributing positively to community issues. With the prior knowledge of community problems, teachers can use these opportunities for students to apply their learning. The teacher can demarcate components of the curriculum that can be transacted to, through this approach. As already said, teacher can use any of these three or combination of them to design the experiences. Once design phase is completed, organization phase starts. The third phase of curriculum development is organization. Three steps suggested by Hilda Taba fit into this category, organization of content, selection of learning experiences and organization of learning activities. Teachers can help with determining how much weightage should be given to various topics. They can do this based on learner needs and based on their own observations and classroom experiences. The role of teacher has transformed to that of facilitator, mentor and guide. As a facilitator, the teacher must choose learning experiences which are mindful of variety of learning styles and empower students to become self-learners and lifelong learners. The teacher can and does organize the learning activities through daily plans. There may be a need through a standard to some extent and type of sequence of learning experiences so that students receive the best possible quality of learning experiences across faculty. Also, the teachers can organize the activities in such a way that both cognitive and affective development of students is taken into account. Some points are important that teacher must keep in mind while organizing the learning experiences and they are simple content which should precede complex content. The content must match the maturation level of learners. The content must satisfy the immediate needs of learner. The content should provide direction to sequence, sequence should follow a chronological order. Now the last phase which is evaluation of curriculum. Contemporary education recognizes evaluation as an integral part of instructional process. Modern educational procedures divide the responsibility of the teacher into three distinct areas. Number one, planning instruction. Number two, directing instruction. Number three, evaluating instruction. All three functions 
are of equal importance and have an impact on the actual results obtained by students in terms of their achievement and growth. The teacher is involved in the identification and formulation of comprehensive range of major objectives of curriculum, their definition in terms of student behavior and the construction of valid, reliable and practical instruments for observing the specific phases of student behavior such as knowledge, information, skills, attitudes, appreciations, personal and social adaptability, interests and work habits. The teacher is expected to carry out evaluation using following steps. Number 1, formulating objectives. Number 2, securing guidance on achievement of objectives in selected situations. Number 3, summarizing and recording evidence, interpreting evidence and fifth, using interpretations to improve instructions and student progress report. In the ongoing role of an evaluator, the teacher has the following functions. Number 1, integration with instruction. Appraisal cannot be separated from instruction in the classroom. The alert teacher observes and notes students needs and makes changes to improve the program it is being developed. The teacher uses valuable evaluative procedures such as group discussions, peer observations, preparing charts or group standards and using checklists as a part of instructional process. Second, evaluation is an ongoing process. Throughout the year, the teacher employs diagnostic, formative and summative evaluation techniques to assess learning. Diagnosis appraisal is done to determine individual and group needs. Formative evaluation provides evidence on learning and how instruction should proceed. Summative evaluation at the end of the unit or course is done to get the evidence for the attainment of stated objectives. The teacher blends all three parts of the instructional process. Number three evaluation as a cooperative process. The teacher must ensure that evaluation is carried out in consultation and with the involvement of all stakeholders, other teachers, students and parents, supervisors and administrative officers also cooperate in the program in order to give it balance, directional and systematic considerations. Number four, clear link with objectives. The teacher has to continually ensure that assessment and evaluation is in the line of objectives. Number five, variety of setting. The teacher needs to be alert to new ideas, new ways of doing things and take suggestions and arise out of group discussion. Number six, use of variety of devices. If the teacher has to evaluate all outcomes, then he or she needs to use different instruments and techniques. Checklists can be designed to apprise cooperation, discussion and use of materials, tests for measuring concepts, information and study skills and anecdotal records, charts, rating scales and other devices can also be used as need arises.
So, friends, in conclusion, we can say teacher can play a pivotal role in the various phases of curriculum development. This includes contribution in planning, designing, organizing and evaluating the curriculum. Thank you.